Hey everyone, Sean McElroy here with our AutoLine exclusives and joining me today is Jarrett Schlaff. He's the CEO of Pingree Detroit. Now that, main, that name may trigger a few of you. We ran a story about them recently in our AutoLine Daily program. But uh, for those of us who don't know, Jarrett, can you tell us a little bit about Pingree? Sure, it's good to be with you, Sean. And hello to everyone out there. Uh, Pingree Detroit, we're a seven year old uh, worker owned company based here in Detroit that takes leather, seatbelts, airbags from brand new cars, and we turn them into everything from brand new dog leashes to wallets to backpacks and purses and the first sneakers made in Detroit since the 50s, all handmade by our team of U.S. veterans and Detroiters. Yeah, I think uh, the sneakers and shoes are kind of what kicked you guys off, right? No pun intended, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, we launched shoes in 2018, which was super exciting. Before then, we, we did a few small products, like a, we had a tote bag and a keychain and an, actually a, a Gen 1 of our workfolio moleskin journal. Um, we, we ran a couple unsuccessful crowdfunding campaigns. We first got going. We we thought we could bring back shoe production for a lot less than was actually necessary to get it going. I uh, learned a lot of lessons in the first few years, and seven years later, we're, we're a team of 10. We're moving and grooving. Yeah, and one of the things I find so cool about you guys is you're taking what would be just scraps or maybe even trash uh, otherwise and taking them and turning them into these products, which is fantastic. Completely. Uh, the old adage, you know, one person's trash. Well, that's our treasure, right? We're, this is brand new leather, but it's sometimes really small pieces. You, you might not be able to turn it into a car seat or a steering wheel, but we can turn it into a wall or some of the larger pieces, shoes or backpacks. So we really are excited and grateful to partner to both solve a problem for some larger OEMs. And we've worked with everyone from Ford, GM and Chrysler to Instalas to um, partners like Lear, Eagle Ottawa, and, and recently Auto, Autolive to, yeah, divert over 17 tons of leather and seatbelt material from the landfill since 2015. Yeah, yeah, and I've got to imagine that uh, Detroit's proximity to so many automakers and suppliers was a key reason why you set up shop where you did. Yeah, I mean, I'm born and raised in Pontiac and, and lived in Detroit since 2010. So we're right by kind of, you know, we are the big three, right? They call it the Motor City for a reason, right? And so in one of my previous careers, I worked for the state of Michigan helping the auto companies and other businesses try and reduce their waste streams. And so it was on my radar. And then when we decided to create some meaningful work opportunities for veterans and Detroiters at a neighborhood level, and we're trying to figure out what we can make and how can we create these jobs we heard about and kind of explored this concept of well, what if we turn this quote unquote waste into beautiful products that inspire. Well, and you mentioned it a little bit for my next question here is that it's not just the materials themselves. There's great access to workers too that have a lot of experience with leather working or just on cars in general too. 100%. Yeah. I mean, we are beautifully situated a place where you know, even sewers that we've hired, right? They might have had experience selling for some of the larger companies. And you might go from a production line to doing a little bit more of a creative side of work with us, where instead of just sewing one car seat hundreds at a time, you might be making a wall one day and next day making some sneakers, next day making a bag and, and work alongside other veterans and Detroiters. So we really are super grateful. We've gotten directly connected with and mentored by some of these larger companies. So um, I don't know if we could have started this company in another place other than Detroit. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, and talk a little bit about some of the materials that you guys are using. Y you know, obviously we've talked uh, touched on leather, but uh, you mentioned a new um, partnership with AutoLeave and seatbelts and stuff like that too. Tell us about what you're turning that stuff into. So literally, uh, this leash was weight tested to withstand 537 pounds of test. So no dog challenge, challenge out there. No dog can break this leash. And uh, this was literally seatbelts used in the testing of Autolive. So in that process, if there's a small color imperfection or as it's going through the testing process, you know, once it's used once, like it goes to the next one. And so we get, you know, different color runs, we get small imperfections, we get still extremely high quality or end cuts uh, of these seatbelts that instead of going to landfill, we're able to turn into right now dog leashes, we're, using airbag for the liners for our bags. You know, it's this extremely durable waterproof material. Uh, and Autolive is one of the largest, if not the largest manufacturers of safety equipment um, for uh, North America. So we're 
super grateful to collaborate with them to turn this into these products currently with our whole pet collection at pingerdetroit.com. And in the future, we're exploring other things with bags and other accessories that we can do as well. That's really cool. I didn't know that uh, you were using the airbag material for <laughs> stuff like that, too. That's I, I, I've even seen, you know, I think there was some uh, Japanese guy that was turning uh, airbag stuff into full full uh, clothing, you know, pants, mm -hmm. jackets, all sorts of stuff. So, I mean, it makes sense that it would be perfect for the inside of a bag or something like that, too. Completely. And then, and then uh, you know, you mentioned the strength of the, the seat belts. And I mean, I think any DIY or home mechanic that's ever tried to lift up an engine has probably <laughs> used an old seat belt that they cut out of, a, you know, something they got at the junkyard or something like that. They, they are borderline indestructible, right? And so that's, for us, an opportunity. And what's beautiful is we actually double it up and then sew this with the military-grade industrial thread. So it's double the strength of that same seatbelt that's picking up an engine. Um, you know, a lot of, we even know places where the military has turned them into toe straps, you know? So we, we take something that again, we're trying to find a new life for it, put, repurpose it, um, keep it from going to landfill. And um, again, we're, we're a small team of veterans and Detroiters doing our best to create meaningful work opportunities uh, as well as just, you know, keeping, keeping products that inspire people and solving the problems. So these are only, you know, a $29.99 for a leash that's made in Detroit where 77% of the profits go back to the workers on the team. And, um, you know, we're a zero waste carbon negative company. So trying to do our small part and super grateful for folks like you helping to tell our story. No, I, and I, I would tell people that the products are made fantastically. I, I actually have a piece myself that, uh, I, I use, I got as my wallet that I have. Okay. <laughs> so it was kind of cool. Uh, I was on, a the Corvette C8 program, the new the new vet program. And yes. that was one of the things that they, they handed out to us. And it's kind of cool because, you know, they tell you that the, the leather comes right from Corvette manufacturing, which is kind of cool. Do you get that kind of detail in any of the, the products that you get from the automakers? Do you know like exactly what vehicles they're coming from or anything like that? So the fun, both challenge and opportunities, a lot of times we, we know some of them, but we don't necessarily yet have the, the licensing relationships to be able to say, hey, you know, unless Corvette comes to us and says, hey, make us this C8 Corvette leather wallet with, you know, the Corvette logo, then boom all day. But, um, you know, I might know that this goes into a, you know, a brand new Mach-E Ford, but I, I can't say that's where this leather comes from. Um, there have been some times like we were on ABC World News tonight because of a Ford donation of like $50,000 worth of leather we were able to talk about the fact that, hey, all these products in the next six months are gonna be made with this board leather, but we couldn't really call out, hey, this is actually coming from King Ranch, or this was actually the, uh, you know, the brand new Bronco when they told us that and we could see it on the line sheet, but um, for multiple reasons, we don't have the, the licensing yet, but crossing our fingers that uh, in the future, that'll change. Well, I'll say, come on, automakers, let's <laughs> do this for them. I mean, and, and, I, and truthfully, that's, I think, would be great for customers because me knowing that the, the wallet came from Corvette is actually kind of cool. You know, it adds a little something to the story to the piece. Oh, so, it'd be, uh, you know, I, I hope that the automakers uh, get off their butts and uh, let, <laughs> let you do that. You just got to be in front of the right people, right? It would be a yes. dream to be able to make a, you know, a matching wallet or something that goes in a glove box that's made from the same leather from the off cuts of that car seat, right? Um, we just got to connect with the right people. Maybe maybe this program will be a part of getting there, you know? <laughs> That'd be cool. That'd be cool. But, uh, well, let people know where they can get your stuff or come check you out or anything like that. Cause of course. So you can knock on stuff. Sean's door so you can see his wallet. That's one way. Um, but the more practical way is to go to our website uh, as well as our social media at pingreedetroit.com. That's P-I-N-G-R-E-E. -E detroit.com um that's the same handle at Pingu detroit on instagram facebook pinterest um you know we, relationships are definitely our strongest currency so even if you don't become a customer right away subscribe to our newsletter when you see a story that inspires you from a product we're making or something we launch maybe you share it with a friend or you you tell people about it to date we've done almost all organic um as far as advertising because we haven't necessarily had the budgets yet so to just really like let folks know that we're out here and what we're up to and what our mission is about honestly makes our makes our entire mission and work possible no no like i said at the beginning here it's cool stuff you're making a quality product you got a cool diverse team that's making all this stuff too so 
I mean, I, I think it's worth a check out for most people. Uh, if you don't, like you said, if you don't buy something, no problem, but it really is good quality stuff and uh, a cool story. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, no, thanks for joining me today, Jared. Really appreciate it. Of course, and I'll, I'll leave folks with this. If, if you can tell three people the next three weeks about our work, that literally transforms what's possible. Uh, and again, thank you so much for having your show. We'd love to show Sean and uh, yeah, thanks and everyone for, for taking time. Yeah, yeah, and I'll uh, let's transform the company, people. Let's do it. <laughs> awesome. Hey, thanks so much, y'all.